What is up guys? Welcome back to Coal Town. So today what we'll be doing is we're going to be going over the new update, the January update that will be releasing soon. Alright, so quickly taking a look at the wall breakers at Arena Standard. They are an epic troop. They cost 3 elixir. They have 400, they do 400 damage apiece. They uh, do have 275 hit points. They target buildings. The speed is very fast. The range is melee and the count is 2. In my mind, they're basically fire spirits that target buildings. Uh, there's two of them. And their purpose is going to be somewhere between like a siege counter and like a support troop that goes in behind tanks and tries to kill a defense. Think, think giant, golem, hog, ram rider. Put them behind that unit and it'll attack the inferno tower, whatever defense, the mortar. Um, any defense I use to uh, to kill or to, to, to counter your tank. Um, right now they seem kind of weak to me. They may have found a niche or a deck that works really well with them. Uh, like, for example, they feel like for two elixir, I could see them being really good behind like a hog to take out like a cannon or a Tesla to counter it. Um, this is just how I've kind of felt. And uh, we'll see from the gameplay what you guys think. But uh, they definitely have uses. Um... And then it's kind of hard to get them to the tower, I would imagine, if your opponent, like, defends it all. They are very fragile, but they can't be killed by either Log or Barb Barrel. Audio cuts out right here, so I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of talk to you guys. So mainly, I would be using this troop as a way to help connect, like, tower targeting troops to the tower. Hog, giant, goblin giant, all those things. You're going to be a lot better off using it in that way than using it as a single threat or using it just directly at the bridge. Uh, because it's not that strong all by itself, and it's kind of expensive, so you can't really just throw it down like a two elixir card. Um, and it can be easily countered, as you can see here. Ice Spirit doesn't, but, you know, everything else that's cheap does. Buller, of course, destroys it and counter pushes. And it's a three elixir card, so you have to be careful. So I'm going to say the main uses are definitely going to be either in front of or behind tanks to help clear their path. Uh, keep that in mind. That's what I found it to be really good at. The new arena that they'll be adding. Um, so we'll quickly scroll down here. And you can see that is Spooky Town. Um, along with the new arena releasing, we're now going to be having higher rewards for 4,000 trophies and up. So that'll be a little bit better for the progression of everybody. We'll get chests and cards a little bit, or not chests, but we'll get cards unlocked a little bit faster, a little bit extra gold. Uh, nothing major, but uh, that'll be that's good in the overall like economy of like leveling up to 13 faster for everyone. Um, and then the uh the thing that's different about or some of the things that have changed are I'm, I'm not sure exactly which ones if anyone's very versed in what cards are in what arenas they did apparently move around uh some of the cards in every arena you can tell it's obviously very thematic like uh the electric cards are all and it's been like this but they've apparently done it a little bit more so perhaps if you're a low level player you can unlock some cards that you couldn't faster now in your chest so if you uh if you d definitely if you're like arena 10 or below i would check out the arenas and see if there's any cards uh that you can unlock now that you previously couldn't so that could be really exciting for some players for sure all right moving on we're gonna have two new game modes so the year of the hogs is the first one and uh i'll, I'll throw up some gameplay uh before we cut to the next challenge all right so we're about to hop in and try some gameplay with the new mode with clash with ash all right let's see what we can do
Yeah, so the, the, the baby hogs, they start off really slow and then they build up as the game goes on. It's so much like, yeah, you just get you just get free damage all the time from the, the hog spawning. I, I need to pay attention. I can't tell if they spawn in a pattern or not. I, I'm assuming they probably do. Okay, so I got two on the left side twice in a row there. Right, or did I? Or no, I had one on the right before that because there's one on the tower right now. So do they just flop sides every time? I, I think they do. So I think graveyard could be really good with them. Because it means that you always have free tanks. And then you don't have to bring like an ice golem, for example. I think miner could be good with them for the same reason. It's always just free tanks. And then over time, obviously, the number of hogs increases. So that's how it works. So if you're going real try hard, I think the way to go is to have bowlers for sure. Because bowlers are really good against real hogs and they stack up. Uh... And get a lot of value and then I think graveyard probably because it, it complements just having free tanks really well and like splashing obviously because look, look at those baby dragons how much value they're getting from just staying on my side so splash obviously good at killing all these rural hogs that spawn on each side Ooh, I feel bad. <laughs> My deck is just... It, it it worked well with the, the challenge. So that's what I think is probably best, guys. If you want to get lots of wins in this in this uh, this World Hog Challenge, uh, the Year of the Hog Challenge, definitely use like a variant of Splash Shard. Here's the deck I just used. I wanted kind of a quick cycle with just these cards. I don't really think I need like any other tank. I think Barbaro's good at killing them. Maybe Tombstone and then NATO, of course, and then this. So that's this is my uh, my candidate. And you're not even really worried about uh, like three musk, I think, because you can nail them all to one lane, and then you're always gonna have pressure, so like they can't really pump, and then if they do, you can graveyard with the roll hogs and get lots of damage because you get a free tank, so it's like cheaper graveyard pushes. So that's what I'm gonna su suggest is my main deck for this challenge, or at least a variant of this anyway. All right, next up we have a new mode that can be implemented in global tournaments, as shown here. Um, and that will be the mini t collection tournament, which is basically like a war day uh, War battle basically um, between everybody uh, So that everyone is limited to a smaller card collection And I think this should be interesting because it means basically we're gonna get a lot of battles with very off meta slash weird slash limited decks where you're gonna see people maybe making their own decks You're gonna see people maybe mimicking meta decks, but with replacements um, and it should be it should make for a really wacky, random, and uh, unique battle and gameplay. So I'm, I'm definitely excited for this, and I think it'll be cool. Next up, something that I'm sure you guys will love, is they're going to make it easier to trade. Um, and the way they're going to make it easier is, I'm gonna, okay, so let's say I want a log. I'm going to request log, and I can pick that they take any of these cards from me. So now, not only are you going to have to send less requests because a lot of the time what I would do is I would request a log and then I would request it four times if I had four tokens and then like each card would be different because I'm like I don't know what people want um, so now with one request you can run give your uh, clan mates an option of sending you four different cards this should make trades happen a lot easier like uh, because of course you're gonna do something that benefits you right so if you have more options you're more likely of course if you're not giving like if, if you only pick bad cards for your and then of course you can also only pick so like say you can only trade two legendaries away then you can only pick two but this gives you a much uh, for people that have options of what they can give out it gives you a lot more uh, flexibility and it makes it much more likely for the clan chat to be less clogged up because more trades will happen uh, so and then yeah so your your uh, your clan mates can give you any of four cards that you select for them to give you and then you give away that one thing that they requested and then you get the thing that you wanted so I find that really cool. That's a really nice UI fix and a good addition. Another UI fix slash improvement is that in private tournaments now, you can now set the max amount of losses uh, similar to global tournaments. So you can make it to where you just can't lose a certain amount of times and uh, have it go that way. 
uh, which is pretty cool since I think it's weird that they don't do trophies anymore. I would rather, I think I would like the trophies, even if they keep the losses, uh, to give you a little bit more flexibility in like what you choose and how you want your tournament ran as opposed to just like the number of wins. But um, it, it's interesting because it's what they do for global tournaments as well. So I don't hate it. I like the added losses. I think that makes it a lot more balanced probably. Uh, and then also when you create a private tournament, it's shared into your clan chat, which is really nice for like brackets and stuff. So that's pretty cool. And then something I can't show off here, though, is that uh, now or when you're searching for clans, it'll recommend uh, five clans that your friends are already in. So if you can join it, I suppose it'll show up in your clan uh, or when you're searching for a clan, uh, you'll have the ability to see your friends clans first, which is kind of cool, I think. All right, that is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoy the new update as it rolls out. Uh, let me know if you like these videos. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll try to get more of this content out. I'm really happy to have access to the dev build now so I can show you guys this before it comes out. And uh, I really hope that I'm able to give like pro insights into new cards and kind of give you guys an early shot into these challenges, into these cards, and gives you advice that really puts you ahead of the curb. Um, I'm doing my best to like analyze these and let you guys know the information that I discover as I use it uh, so that you possibly are able to understand the card a bit better than others uh, because you'll already have this information before you use it for yourself. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know if there's anything I can improve on or what you did like. Uh, and please discuss everything shown in the video below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.